girls, it's Miss Katie, and I have some super fun activities for you today. Hey girls, it's Miss Katie, and we're going to go over one of my favorite topics today, which is aerodynamics. If you're familiar with it, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth about it. So just stick tight and enjoy. Okay, so what is aerodynamics? The way air moves around things, right? So it's the study of how air and objects in the air or animals in the air interact with one another. So anything that moves through the air, birds, planes, balloons, anything that moves through the air reacts to aerodynamics. Now there are the four forces of flight and I'll go over each one in depth. So make a note of these because I'm going to ask you about them later. We have weight, lift, drag, and thrust. And I'm going to go over each one of those in detail. So our four forces of flight. Weight. Everything on Earth has weight, right? We're, we have gravity. We're affected by gravity. The weight is what is pulling down on the object, right? So it's pulling down on, and what we're going to use, for example, today is our plane. So it's going to be pulling down on the plane. That's natural. It happens to everything, right? So the weight, depending on how heavy something is, right? The weight pulling down, the gravity pulling down on it, that kind of dictates how strong our push is going to need to be. And, and we're gonna get to that. Or lift. Lift is the push that lets something go up, right? So for an up, for an aircraft to move upwards, right? So for a plane to take off, it must have more lift than it does weight. So the lift for a plane comes from its wings. And if you've ever noticed, wings are designed um, kind of in a weird way. Let me see if I can draw one for you. I'm not a very talented artist, so. Hopefully this will get it across. So wings are kind of designed like this, right? So this is the front of the plane. This is the back of the plane. It's designed like this. And what that does, and I could go way into it, essentially the way that it's angled is that it, the air comes up under the wing, under this angle and lifts it upwards. This is a very, very basic rough drawing of it. But essentially that's how planes get their lift. They get it through wings. And the way that their wings are designed helps with that lift. So again, for an aircraft in order for it to move upwards, it must have more lift than it does weight. So it must be generating more lift power than it does having the gravity pulling down on it. And it comes from the wings on planes. So drag. Drag is a force that tries to slow something down, right? Have you ever tried like walking through water and it's kind of difficult to move through it, right? There's a lot of drag in there. Or if you've ever been biking and you put your arms out, there's a little bit of resistance on your arms, right? That's drag. So drag tries to slow something down. The more air that hits a surface, the more drag it makes. So think of it kind of like a sail, right? A sail on a ship. Now, ships use that air to catch it, right? That wide surface area, and that's what, you know, pulls it along. But if you're trying to fly, if you have something big like a sail or like a parachute, that's gonna catch all that air and it's actually gonna slow it down, right? Because you're trying to move through the air, not catch it. So, you know, the more surface area, the more anything that it touches, it's gonna cause drag. So that's why planes, and other kind of, you know, air vehicles are designed very sleek, right? Very smooth. Um, that's actually where, this is a little interesting fact for you, that's where, if you guys know Rosie the Riveter, you know, the We Can Do It woman with the bandana, uh, the rivets were actually invented. So, because the screws on top of the plane, when they were, you know, putting the metal sheets together, the screws, the 3D screws that are on top were causing too much drag. So they designed it so that the screws would lay flush, would lay flat, so they wouldn't be sticking out on top. And that's, that's how they got the rivets. So there's a little fact for you guys, which is kind of cool. And now onto our last force of flight is thrust, okay? Thrust is a force opposite of drag. So it's the push forward. So lift is a push up, thrust is a push forward. 
So this would be like our jet engines or our propellers, right? Anything that's, that's generating that push forward. So we need that in order to stay in the air. You know, planes don't flap their wings like birds do. So we need to have something that will generate thrust for us in order for us to stay airborne. So I have a little picture for you guys um, that kind of explains it again, a little bit easier. And this is kind of how we're gonna base our airplane off of. So, you know, here in the front, we have the propeller. So we have thrust, that's what's helping us stay forward. The weight or gravity is pulling us down, which is natural, it's gonna happen. There's kind of no way to avoid it. Lift from our wings, keeping our, us lifted, the push, that push upwards, right? Because we're catching air underneath the wing in a certain way so that it, it generates a force upwards. And then drag, it's just the whole thing. Whatever air is touching any surface is gonna cause drag. So you need to have your thrust. Your thrust needs to be stronger than your drag in order to, for it to propel through the air. All right. So now with that knowledge, and again, I'm gonna ask you guys on these. So take a, take a second to look there while I get my paper ready, All right? We have our lift, thrust, weight, and drag. Let's take a look at that. Remember, I'm gonna ask you guys to explain them to me. Okay. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of try to experiment and, and see this with our own eyes with paper airplane. If you've made a paper airplane, awesome. If you guys don't know how to do one, I will show you right now how to do one. So what I do usually is I fold it hot dog style. I think this is, I haven't been in school in a long time. This is hamburger. This is hot dog, I believe, because it's longer. So we're gonna go longer. So you wanna line the ends up, right? When you're folding it this way, you wanna line them up as, as perfectly as possible. And now we're gonna press down. Now here's, here's what's really important. Using the side of your thumb, we're going to kind of where the nail and the skin meet, we're gonna push, really push down on that crease. Why do you think we're gonna push down on that crease? It's gonna make it, it's gonna make it a lot tighter, a lot smoother. Why do you think we're gonna do that? What are we trying to avoid? What are we trying to have more of? We're trying to have more thrust in order to counteract the amount of drag. So you wanna minimize drag. So the smoother, the, the thinner you can get it, the better. Cause that's gonna, it's less surface area, right? There's less air for it to hit. So it's gonna cause less drag and that's where our plane's gonna fly better. So now we're gonna open it up and we're gonna fold, we're gonna take the top, top half and we're gonna fold it in to that middle line. Doesn't need to be totally perfect Again, thumb, you wanna make sure you crease it down nice and tight. That way we don't have any extra air pockets that'll get in the way of our flight. Because any extra, it's gonna cause drag and our plane's not gonna fly as well. Because the only thrust that we're getting is from when we throw it. So this is gonna work more like a glider plane. Glider planes do not have thrust because they don't have an engine or a propeller. So what they do is they just catch the air and then they kind of, and they use drag to kind of slowly slow them down as they kind of make their way down, back down to land. So now for the wings, now that we've kind of folded it back in half, right, like this, the wings, we're going to fold them down. And we're again going to line them up as neatly as possible. The less creases, and bumps you have, the better it's gonna be. Now, it takes practice, I'm gonna tell you that. I have been making paper airplanes probably longer than you guys have been alive. So it's gonna take some practice. So just, there's no race, no rush, take your time with it. I promise you it's gonna fly better the more, the more gentle and careful you are with folding this. So then, We are gonna do this, okay. So we finish our wings. We can go ahead and fold them out. 
right? So those are our wings. And this is our plane. All right. So the, the wings are going to get lift from the air when we throw it. Our thrust is going to be from us tossing it, right? That's all we really got right now. So the thrust has to be more than the drag and the weight, which is why you want to use regular paper. I'm sorry, I should have said that earlier. I'll make a note of it. Use just regular paper. The reason why is because it's, it's lighter, and so it's easier for us to counteract that, that weight. Okay, and now we're going to go throw it around and see how it flies. Thank you girls, hope you enjoyed.